for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a tips video for you guys today. One of my most asked questions in my comments, no matter what video I put out, offense or defense, is what do I set my zone drops to? Well, in today's video, I'm going to go a step further, and I'm going to show you guys what all the best coaching adjustments are to use on offense and defense since the November patch came out. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button let me know in the comment section. Now, for my next-gen followers, I'm going to start off with game plan. You can't do this on current gen, but it's a really fun feature on next-gen. Number one, I never choose run inside or outside because even if I plan on running, you can see the negatives attached. Unless you're going to just run inside the entire game, which is going to make you very predictable, you're going to basically lose your ability to run outside as effectively. Unless you plan on doing nothing but running outside, you're going to lose your ability to run inside effectively. Me personally, I like to run inside and outside, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to choose either one of these. The same can be said for throw it short, throw it medium, or throw it deep, but ultimately my only real game plan is to run, 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 and bomb it up. So I I always choose throw it deep pretty much every single time this is my number one uh, option that I pick I mean there's obviously a lot of benefits when it comes to these other ones but ultimately I'm just trying to uh, get explosive passing plays which you can tell from my videos are mostly explosive offensive plays now on the defensive side I don't have a set one it pretty much changes every single time if you're going against a team like the Cowboys or any team that's a run heavy team I typically go with run outside because most people like to run outside that's where the explosive plays are and that's where the effectiveness in Madden's AI kind of drops so so ultimately, I choose outside run if I go against somebody who has a running back that I would imagine, like a Derrick Henry. If I see the Titans, I'm pretty much taking run outside every single time. But you really want to do this based off of what your opponent has on offense. So if I'm going against a team like the Chiefs, obviously I want to defend deep pass. I don't want to give up a lot of one-play touchdowns to Tyree Kill and McCole Harbin. Any team that has a super fast receiver, I'm typically going to weigh on the side of caution and go with defend, defend deep pass. That just makes the most sense. So pick these based off of the strength of your opponent team and that's pretty much what you have to do every single time if you're going against Lamar Jackson you're going to pick contain QB scramble it's pretty obvious you just base it off of what your opponent has on their offense so now starting with the fun stuff we have defensive auto flip this here I usually say take it off but to be honest with you, I've forgotten pretty much the entire year to take it off, and I haven't really noticed. So to me, it's pretty ineffectual. I don't think it really matters whether they have it on or off. Next up, we have auto alignment. Now, a lot of times I leave this at default, but if there's one that I would use, it would be base. Base is something that uh, has a benefit to hide your defensive coverage so that it'll look the same every single time that your opponent comes out. They'll see what looks like the same defense. Now, one of my biggest ones is ball in the air defense. This one here, I hit the play ball every single time. I'm trying to get interceptions. And if you play the ball well enough, you will get the same type of knockout animations that you would get from play receiver or swap ball you'll basically either catch it or the ball will hit the ground if you're good at playing the ball in the air next up we have cornerback matchups now this one's really important but it really depends on what your opponent's playing with if you are playing against a team like the chiefs and regs you definitely want to go by speed because that's something that can basically win or lose a game for you is guys like tyree kill and mccall hardman just basically burning slower cornerbacks i don't want jimmy smith going against one of those corner one of those receivers if you have a really tall receiver that you're worried about you go by height uh, but you basically just want to know the personnel you're matching up against and then try to match it me personally like i said by speed probably makes the most sense when it comes to option defense everybody says play uh conservative which is focus on the quarterback because those are the biggest runs you're going to get out of it you can basically i mean the defense does a pretty good job of stopping running backs when it comes to read options anyway but they'll completely forget about the quarterback so always go with conservative when it comes to option defense when it comes to strip ball i typically go with balanced uh, but there are opportunities for conservative and for aggressive. Aggressive, I would only use if I'm down late in the game and I need to force a fumble because typically you get in a penalty for a face mask, probably one every four to five plays. If you're doing a solo where you have to get a fumble too, this would probably be the only other time I would put this on. So, you know, these two here, I would say strip ball, I go, every once in a while I go conservative um, if somebody's running the ball heavily, but ultimately I leave those at balanced. And then last but not least, we have zone drops uh, when it comes to flats, uh, curl flats and hooks. Now, when it comes to flats, if you're mabling a lot, you can really do, this is a really expendable zone coverage. I mean, if you're if you're defending a lot of run plays or if you're defending a lot of drags, uh, a lot of screen plays, zero to five makes the most sense when it comes to flats. Like I said, that's mostly for hard flats. Uh, like I said, if you're mabling with curl flats over the top, you can do that, but you can't really run that all game. If you're running a lot of cover twos by themselves, a lot of times you're gonna wanna go 20 to 25. I know a lot of people will go 15 to 20. I personally said to about 20 to 25. It really depends on what I'm doing. 
Like if I'm pressing or if I'm bringing my safeties down a lot, especially when it comes to cover two, I'm definitely going 25 because I want these guys to drop back and cover any deep passes to give my safeties chances to uh, to drop back. But ultimately, I know a lot of pros that go 25 on this. I know a lot of pros that go 30. Me personally, I like to go 20 to 25 if I'm running straight cover twos. Now, I don't do that the entire game. I pretty much run default the entire game. I only switch it up if I see opportunities and then I might immediately go back to default. So it really depends on what you're doing defensively. There's no real zone setting. You should just set it to and run it all game. This is something that you should be changing a lot throughout the game. Same thing goes with curl flats. Now curl flats, last year the most popular was 25 to 30. I still feel like that's a pretty good way to go. Although since the November patch, I've noticed that curl flats perform a lot better when it comes to following and coverages. So I can leave that to default for a large portion of the game. And then if I got somebody who's hitting me with a lot of slants, I go 15 to 20. If they're hitting me with a lot of deep crossers, I go 25 to 30. Uh, but once again, these are things that you don't want to just set and forget. You want to make sure you're constantly changing throughout the game. Then when it comes to hooks, now hooks are a little bit different. I don't necessarily want to set my hooks. If you're running cover three, the hooks do a pretty good job of following receivers back. So if you set these to about, say, a 10, which I think is a good option for crossing routes, 10 to 15, then they're not going to follow past that point, where at default, they'll follow streaks up your cover three seams and stuff like that. This affects hook, curl, three rec, mid read. Obviously, if you have your middle read, if you're running a cover two and your middle read is at 10 yards, that's a huge disadvantage because that's one of the... the sore spots when it comes to cover two. That's one of the opportunities is right between the safeties. So to me, I leave hook, hook zones to default. Now, when it comes to offense, there's four here, but the only one I really mess with is ball carry, and that's highly situational. When it comes to deep pass catching, I don't want to automatically trigger anything because I have the option to do that when I click on. So if that's something that you're not good at, you can set it to conservative for rack catches or aggressive for aggressive catches, but I clearly don't want to do that. I want to make that decision with what I'm seeing in front of me. Same thing with intermediate media pass catching. It's the exact same thing, possession or rack. So I can make that decision during the play. Uh, if you're not good at that though, you could obviously set that however you want. Then when it comes to blocking, I'd say leave it at balance once again because aggressive will hold the blocks longer, but you'll still get penalties every fourth or fifth play for holding, so it's not worth it. And then conservative basically is just, you know, I'm not going to mess with my blocking. It says con, hold blocks less for run and pass so that you don't get holding penalties. Well, holding penalties aren't that com common anyway. They're only really common when it comes to putting it to aggressive. So that's something where I would leave that a bounce. And then ball carrier, I pretty much leave a bounce as well. But if you don't want to fumble, you can set it to conservative. And if you're trying to make more plays, break more tackles, you can set it to uh, aggressive, but then you increase your chances of fumbling. So that's something where it's really situational. If you're down in a game, you need to make a play, set it to aggressive. If you're up in a game, you're just trying to uh, kill clock, set it to conservatives. But otherwise, Offense is not nearly as important as defense, as you can pretty much leave all these on balance the entire game. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, you want me to keep you guys up to date on this topic, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.